and welcome to RACOS Forum. Today we are going to have an interesting discussion with a number of uh, leaders in the community and we're going to speak about infield development. It's a topic that has been uh, quite uh, spoken for many years and uh, two of my guests at this point are Ricardo who represents uh, the Ready Payers on the Markham side, one group of Ready Payers, and uh, Sandra Young Racco who is a counselor in the city of Bonn but she's also my wife for the records and she will be looking from a ca an elected official but Ricardo you have uh, taken over as chairman of one of the oldest players uh, groups uh, in Markham and I understand that you're having some difficulty with what has been happening in the area. Can you tell us uh, what are your issues? Sure, uh, well I represent the Grandview Area Residents Association we're in the Markham uh, uh, side of Thornhill. Uh, we've been around since 1989 and we represent about 1,100 homes and uh, because of the uh, our proximity we're basically a Young and Steels area um, that corridor, Young Steel's corridor, is earmarked for intensification through the Places to Grow Act through the provincial government. So we're getting a lot of development, uh, commercial development, along that strip from uh, Steel's along Young Street to Highway 7. So we've had uh, in the past few years the World on Young, which is a very large uh, complex at uh, Young and Doncaster. Uh, I think two buildings are like 32 stories tall. There is a hotel and office complex. There's 1,230 condominiums, which is yeah. Quite, and there's quite also a, feat. a food center, a yes, number of retail, shops. We have yes. been there a few oh, times. Yeah, yeah. interesting and so, place. Yeah, and so now we have a new developer approaching uh, w that will be built shortly at Young and Grandview, about two blocks south. Of, um, of the uh, World on Young site, and that's a 25-story complex. Yeah. And there is a picture that we should be yeah. able to see that is showing the, how this building is going to look like. Yeah, uh, yeah. If, you, if you could show the picture, I, I, can, uh, I can refer to it. But um, yeah, so there's going to be 200 condominiums, so there, th that's a lot more uh, individuals, you know, a strain on infrastructure, and especially traffic. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, uh, here, here's a picture of it right now, mm -hmm. and that's looking east. Uh, it towards looks very attractive, the building. Yeah. The question, though, is the traffic. Yeah, the change. It, the traffic is always an issue, I think, when intensification comes around. And there's another picture here. It's looking south towards the city of Toronto. The other side so it's going to be uh, quite large. And if you look at the overview, uh, the map overview, you'll see that there are many residential homes just to the east. Uh, and, that's, and that's the issue here that I have with uh, city planners and politicians in, in the city of Markham is that uh, they need to be proactive. Developers are here and they're motivated and they want things built yesterday, <laughs> right? And they're not going to wait. So, you know, uh, they have to be, the city planners and, and uh, politicians have to be in front of development in, firm, uh, in terms of uh, firm guidelines in order to uh, manage you know, the yes. intensification and mitigate traffic infiltration. Sandra, he is asking for the politician and staff should be a little more uh, active. What would you say to that? Well, I think in our experience in the city of Vaughan, I don't know Markham as much, but in the city of Vaughan, we are uh, certainly, uh, we try to be proactive. We learn about these uh, these uh, applications as early as possible and start working along. it. We try to stick to the policy that we have uh, mm -hmm. approved. So for us, it's the Vaughan official plan that uh, we're relying on. on that. That. So we try to do that, but you are absolutely right. Uh, there are a lot of these uh, builders and landowners that do come in, and they're asking for the sky. Yes. When really yeah. they probably are not supposed to, you know. Yeah. But Ricardo, they try. What would, what would uh, you say, uh, you and your uh, neighbors? Uh, mm -hmm. Are they are they happy with the OMB decision? Or? You know, th there's a couple influences here. Uh, obviously, you have the developers that are motivated. And then you have the Committee of Adjustment in Markham, which uh, grants the applicants uh, variances. So, and then you have the OMB. And generally, if uh, there is an issue between the developer and the, and the city, they will appeal to the OMB. They have deep pockets, and the OMB is very favorable. So it puts the, uh, the particular city, in this case Markham, in, in, a, in a tough spot. Because mm -hmm. even though they've said this is our guidelines, the developer always pushes the envelope. Mm -hmm. And who pays for it is the existing community. So we've suggested uh, different, uh, um, uh, different uh, um, issues with uh, managing that intensification. You know what the decision is, the size of the building. Mm -hmm. What are the people saying? Did, uh, 
your uh, neighbors? Do they want? Did they want to see something smaller? Did they want just to see single homes, or are they happy with the decision? No, I, I think I think people are realistic, uh, Mario. In terms, you know, uh, everything is changing and it's evolving. A subway and, 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 has to come there. Of course, a subway has to come. I'm so envious that you folks have a subway at uh, uh, Jane for many years. And I seven. <laughs> We're yeah, very happy about but it. You know what? Uh, if uh, we believe, if they build it it will come, meaning the subway. So there has to be a subway all the way up to Highway 7 from Finch. Yeah. That would alleviate a lot of the traffic issues. You know, public transit so, so is So would your neighbors important. be happy if we, even if the, the height uh, as it is now, if the subway will come, would they be happy? Or oh, of, course, they, of course they would be so happy. So they're, they're fine with that. Yeah, of course. You know, we, we, we want a subway. You know, we've been yeah. asking our local politicians who have been working with Richmond Hill and Vaughan, mm -hmm. you know, to, to try to yes. encourage us. Uh, the other plazas. Down. So, you know, yeah. if I look at your area yeah. from Steele, there is a few other small plazas. Oh, yeah. What do you, what's going to happen there? All, that entire area of Mario is uh, is earmarked for intensification. As I said, from Steeles to Highway 7 along Young Street, and on the east side of uh, Markham, you know the World on Young is a very large complex, but it, you can identify uh, the density through uh, a certain ratio. It's called the FSI ratio. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in uh, on the Markham side, we are looking at 3.5. Mm -hmm. The higher the ratio, the more intensification mm -hmm. you yes. get. On the west side, which is the Vaughan side, uh, you guys with bonusing are looking at 6.0, double the intensity of so one will be getting a higher economic benefit uh, from uh, the coverage probably than Markham. Well, that's their their prerogative, I guess, because <laughs> they're they're in a different uh, city, and ours is. Uh, but what would you say to that, though, as a Markham resident? I, I well, because we're separated by what. 80, 80 feet mm -hmm. because it's Young Street. You know, right. on the east side is Markham, on the west side is Vaughan. Is that we get uh, thoroughfare traffic? You know, mm -hmm. going east west. Mm -hmm. So when you build these uh, these uh, large units, cars are going to pour out of them in the morning on mm -hmm. both sides and pour back in the, the evening, issue, and they're going to go through all the residential. The issue will continue until yeah. the suburb will come, but we. Uh, but our time is almost over, and I, I guess what's important, Ricardo, is that uh, at least uh, you seem to feel that the community has been able to participate in, the, in those discussions, and uh, there will be changes coming, but uh, you have been able to contribute, and you're asking that the politician and staff be a little more proactive. proactive. Yes. A little more yeah. proactive so that the yeah. people know what's coming yeah. and they will be able to accept it better. And, and bring a subway to and us. And bring man. a subway. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the message. We but we'll be back shortly. Thank you very much. And we are back uh, with another group of Red Bears, uh, the Spring Farm Red Bear Association. I understand that you have been having some major interesting meetings in the last uh, number of months. Uh, of course, uh, with me today I have Pam, uh, who is the uh, president, and uh, Fred, who is the vice president, and you are also co-chair of the SOBI de redevelopment. Can you tell us what's happening in your neighborhood? Yes. About in feeling, of course. <laughs> we are... Um, it our area is mainly single-family homes yes. and a developer has come to come in and purchased a plaza and is proposing originally to put up an 18-story high-rise and then has come back and wants to put up a 20-story high-rise the um, spring farm ratepayers association took the initiative to call a meeting with the developer and um, we talked to them about the community, what we were all about, that this is the center, really, that plaza is the center for observant Jews in the area. It was built as the center. It houses a lot of stores that cater to their needs. There is the kosher only, restaurants. There uh, is the only yeah. kosher Sobeys in mm -hmm. that whole chain, and there is the only kosher Second Cup in that chain. There are kosher restaurants. Yes. There is a, a dress store that koshers to that community. Uh, sorry, that caters to that community. There is. Um, it was built really um, to help that community. And has been from day one. And in yeah. fact, we already have higher density to the east. So there is already supply of a higher density, but most of it is single homes. Right. And of course, to the west, we have the Garnet Hay Williams, right. which is a major facility that the city owns. And so, what is the developer really trying to do? Well, right now, I think the developer is trying to uh, monetize 
what they purchased. Mm -hmm. They look at a plaza that's been there for almost 27, 28 years, and they say, okay, it's time for a refresh. And you know what? I think the citizens agree. There is time for a refresh. But between what we consider a refresh and what the developer has proposed, mm -hmm. there's a wide gap. And the first time that the developer brought the project to us was in November. They called a meeting. November 2015. November 2015, November the 4th, at the Garnick Williams Center, yes. no less. 400 people showed up. And what was presented to us was, as Pam said, an 18-story building. Not, not a redevelopment of the entire plaza, mm -hmm. but an 18-story building shoehorned to the east end mm -hmm. of this plaza taking away 140 parking spots on the surface, leaving uh, 250 or so. What Sobe? What would, uh, would Sobe be still be there? Sobe's has a long-term lease commitment. And by the way, that, uh, we are seeing right now on TV yep. the overall uh, is that the parking yep. area. So yeah. the numbers that I just mentioned, what you yeah. see at the east end, 140 spaces going away. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that a set of professional offices where we have uh, different uh, medical and other things, which is on the second story, all of that would go okay. and essentially be replaced with, yes, some retail, but an 18-story building. Can we see the building? Can we see the building uh, now on screen uh, so that people can appreciate the, the design? Yeah. But having said that, uh, what is that the community would be willing well, to accept? Well, the community, we, we did a survey in December because mm -hmm. we didn't... That's the building, by the way. That okay. is the building. Um, we did a survey to find out because we didn't want to misrepresent the, the community. And what the community basically told us is they are not against intensification. As long as it's done in a responsible manner and the community derives some benefit from it, okay. they would be willing to accept a building that's between six and eight stories. Okay. So um, there's a number. And, okay. um, but what is being proposed, it, it is now zoned for C4, which is uh, four stories, yeah. but they'd be willing to go above that. It's, they're also, the developer is also proposing a density of more than double what is allowed right okay. now. So the community is up in arms about now, this. Now, what was interesting is when we ran the survey, and I was, as the uh, co-chair of the committee, I had the opportunity to develop the survey, run the survey, analyze the survey, and we were very open with the results. I mean, the first meeting that we had once the results were ready was we brought our counselor, Alan Sheffman, and we brought Rio Can together for a meeting, mm -hmm. again, at the Garnet Williams. Yeah. And we said to them, this is what the community is saying. Please listen. Our counselor, I think understands and is very much yeah. He's with you on that. Time. And yes. we thought at the time that Rio Can was beginning to come around because they did something we had never heard of being done before, and we were told by other ratepayer associations who've had similar uh, battles, such as the one uh, at uh, Humbertown. They said the developer waits till way, way, way past before they try and get the uh, uh, the community more involved. Mm -hmm. And they proactively made a proposal to us at that January review of the survey, and they said. What if you participate in a charade? You bring your people, we bring our people, and the charade was, let's design this thing But what's some of that meeting? I didn't so go. Well, no, 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 no. The meeting happened all right. But guess what? The day of the meeting, which was February 3rd of this year, in the late morning, early afternoon, Rio Can submitted its plans and to uh, the city. And we were supposed to meet at 6 So before you even met, they had their own idea, which doesn't fit with what you're proposing, basically. That's right. Well, they, they did, what is they going to listen. be next? We right. have about a minute left. Yep. What would, what's going to happen? What this? we have now is we have a petition. We've mm -hmm. been asked by the community to put forward a petition. We have met with almost every single councillor okay. um, in Vaughan and explained to them exactly what is being proposed. Um, and we have met with the planning department. Uh, our, we are ready to go to council. There is a meeting of the whole public hearing on June the 21st. So that's the next appointment, 21st is, of June that that's our right. city of Bonn Council. And yeah. we ask that if people are interested, we encourage them to come out. Um, you will get an opportunity to speak only for five minutes, but you'll be given Likely. an opportunity to speak and let council know exactly how you feel and how this is going to impact your life. What would you do to that? Well, I think Pam has really said it all. The critical thing right now is to get as many signatures as possible, get as much real fact there out there as much as possible, make sure that we are representing the community because we've got a nice spectrum. We've got people who say, no, hell no. Mm -hmm. We've got people who say, yeah, but. And we have people who say, yeah, 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 let's get this. Mm -hmm. And we recognize there are going to be other developments that are going to be happening. In fact, they're already in front of uh, the uh, planning department. Yeah. 
in the right place. It's uh, let me just, uh, I guess, summarize what really uh, you are saying is on the 21st of June, there will be an opportunity for everyone to express your position in front of council. Take that opportunity. It is in the evening. If you have any questions, call your local council or, or the city, but attend this important meeting so that your position on the matter can be uh, dealt with, can be addressed, and so at the end of the day, the community would have a better deal. We at least I get thank our you, word uh, there. both Pam and Fred, for attending and discussing this issue with us. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome back uh, to Rockles Forum. We are discussing infill uh, uh, developments uh, in the region, and we dealt with two ready pairs, one in the Markham side, one in the one side. And, uh, and now uh, we have uh, Sandra, as we did at the beginning, my wife, Sandra Young Rock, who is a council in the city of Bonn. Uh, Sandra, you have also a number of issues on this topic, uh, not only in your area, but also citywide. Where are we experiencing some problem in Bonn right now? Yeah, I think uh, the, the issue is that we are getting a lot of applications in because, one, people are taking advantage of the fact that, well, because the province says we need to intensify, so people are coming in and saying, well, I'm intensifying areas. And so we're getting m many different requests, but not always in the proper area. So we've had areas over by Pine Valley and, uh, and uh, Langstaff area. We have uh, areas like Keough and Major Mac area. We have Islington uh, and Martin Grove area. So we're getting all sorts of, uh, of uh, requests. And the problem that we are faced for, uh, with as a elected official is making the proper decision because everybody is lobbying you. Everybody wants their, their place to intensify to make a, a bit of money, obviously. Uh, we need to stick to our official plan and that's the reason why in fact uh, the city has taken upon itself to review that infill, uh, the low uh, density infill uh, policy to see what is the right uh, policy in place. We need to have these policy in place so that it's going to help us and it's going to guide us as well as our planners how to make these decisions. So we've had, actually, in fact, we've had uh, a number of public uh, consultation already, three of them uh, in total, and now the, the uh, staff has gone all the comments back and everything, and they will be coming back to us in uh, fall of 2016, later this year, with their recommendation to council. And then at that time, council may or may not make a final decision. Correct, yes. And, if, and when that decision is made, how would that decision affect, for instance, the application on uh, Duffering between uh, rather for the Major Mackenzie or the one on Southview. Would those it's, be affected? No, unfortunately, I did ask that question to staff because those applications are already uh, in the in its process. It will not be affecting those. However, in everything in the future, we will be able to uh, rely on that. But having that said, that the policy will still give us a guideline. So as we make decision from a council perspective, we can at least rely on those type of policies to make that, that, that decision proper decision. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in my area, mm -hmm. I have an area very very old area at uh, by Q and uh, Highway 7 area. Um, we have an applicant that has come in. They've taken out. This is a uh, an area that is zoned as R1V. Tell us why would the resident be upset on that matter? Well, as I said, it's a it's zone R1V, and if uh, for Which people means? that don't know, it's an old uh, it's an old village residential. It's very big estate lots. You're That's what they are. Coverage, if not they, the minimum is 30 meters uh, frontage so. and the coverage of the area is anywhere about 850 meters square minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are big, big lots. lots yeah. So we now have an applicant that has decided he bought two big lots and said, well, I'm coming in, I'm going to divide it up to six lots. So of course the residents are up in arms. Uh, it's, it's totally good because what they're asking for is an R1 or R2 uh, residential. So you're looking at 18 meters frontage as opposed to 30. Like Simply, instead of two homes, they're looking at six homes. That's right. So that's yep. a major increase. Absolutely. And so that's one application. The one on Dufferin had to do with the TRCA report, I believe. 
Yeah, that one is a little bit uh, that different. It is one is because uh, that area has always been uh, said to be uh, open space. Uh, TRCA has, for the longest time, has said it's an open space. And all of a sudden now, with a change of hands of the ownership, they came in, they somehow got a settlement with TRCA. TRCA all of a sudden now is saying that, no, it's okay, you can build, you can bring in low density. So the OMB decision has come in and saying that certain part of it is low density, certain part of it is low density with a special study, and certain part is open space. So the issue is that the residents living around the area one, they have always thought, and, and rightly so, been told that there's nothing supposed to be built behind your homes. Now they're told there's something going to be built. And on top of the fact, now the applicant has come in and says, well, I want 106 uh, townhome units. Well, that's quite ridiculous, especially with the homes there, the frontage is about 30 to 40 uh, uh, meters frontage. So they're coming in uh, with uh, something much smaller, so it's not comparable. Are to the it. residents organized uh, properly so that they can uh, somehow be able to influence council decision or uh, I guess it's too late uh, at the OMB because you, there's no appeal process from the people. No, you can't uh, appeal that but, one. Uh, but could they be able to affect the position of council on the matter and make a difference in what's going to go there? Well, point? I've had uh, meetings with them, and in fact, uh, what I had suggested at that meeting is that we come back together a working group. Okay. A working group is basically taking a selection of a few of the people from the residents, uh, whoever that would represent those uh, streets, and working with us as a city, with our planners, with our, uh, with our uh, staff, and as well with the applicant and his planner, and come up with a compromise that is going to be the best for the community. That's the formula for this development on that frame. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend to the, to the region, anywhere in the region of York where that issue is, which, because it is all over the region, this yes. infilling uh, development uh, or infill development, what would you tell them to do to best organize themselves? I really think that the best thing to do is to work with the uh, applicant to try to come up with something good. Uh, the worst thing to do, I really think, is to let it allow to go to OMB. Once you go to OMB, you lose control. Once you lose control, the, the person, the board, whoever's sitting there, he's going to one that's going to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know, he or she, I should say, doesn't know the area because they don't live in this area. You are the resident. You know your area the best. So let's work with the applicant into the best to make sure that it's Well, the, be the OMB would use uh, planning ar uh, arguments to Absolute, make a decision. only that, yes. While the member of the council would use planning argument, but also the reality in the area which they mm -hmm. represent. That's right. And so normally would be better results for the residents, wouldn't it? Normally it's, uh, it's always a better guy when you have now. There are always situations where maybe it is best for the OMB. And so, th I mean, I know that you're going to be talking a bit uh, a little later on it. Yes. But the fact that OMB reform is being uh, talked about right now is that is the OMB, the, 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 what their role is, are they doing the role or are they overstretching themselves and doing something that they shouldn't be doing? So that's another dis uh, discussion, of course, on that. It is an important discussion. Uh, we will have to end uh, this, but I know we will be discussing the OMB shortly. Uh, so please uh, tune in and see what we have to say on this topic, but also on the OMB topic, so that together we'll understand better how we can address uh, this important issue in our region, uh, quite frankly, in our neighborhood. Thank you, have a wonderful day.